All right, Industry Insider for the third time with Dustin Battleaxe Jones coming up tonight. Uh, we're going to see what Dustin's been up to. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I uh, just checked the audio. It seemed like it was working good. So uh, it's going to be an awesome show to talk with you guys. Dustin Battleaxe Jones, he's, uh, man, he's got so much stuff going on, like crazy amount of stuff. The dude's all over the place. So uh, let us uh, let us know if you can hear us better. Hopefully it's good now. I had to restart the... Oh, yeah. Sweet, dude. Thanks for letting me know. Um, Dustin Battleaxe Jones, we're going to see if we can get him on here and uh, have a little bit of fun. Uh, It's going to be super cool because, uh, like I said before, he's got so much stuff going on, man. He's been hanging out with uh, Cowboy Cerrone, uh, doing stuff with kids. I mean, everything. We'll see if uh, he's going to race Vegas to Reno maybe, too. See if we can get here. I know Dustin was traveling today, so... Hopefully he's got a good internet connection. He can join us and hang out for a little bit. Yo! What's up, my dude? What's happening? Hey, look, the guys at IMG Motorsports, look what they had prepared. A brand Is that new- my rental? Is that dude, my rental yeah. over there? They got it all re- ready to rip, man. Uh, dude, are you, you, got fixing the to, uh, you fixing to change your life and get one of those for a little while? Hey, man, I drove one of those things when we uh, did. Of course, I built it. Those things are fast, man. Uh-oh, maybe Dustin doesn't have a uh, good connection over there. We'll see if he can uh, request to join us again. You guys should check out that bad car back behind us, man. That thing is sweet. I got to talk to Dustin about that thing, too, man. Let's see if we can get him on here. I know he was saying that he's got a uh, spotty internet connection, so we've seen what happens with Dustin and a rental. Yeah. <laughs> Those four rental cars that that guy goes through, right? Uh, so he said he was going to Airbnb, I think. Like I said, he's got a, a travel day. So hopefully we can get him on here, hang out with us for a little bit. Thank you guys all for joining. I see everybody coming on. Uh, rental like Days of Thunder. Hey, if you guys didn't check, uh, uh, Travis Pointer at our last Dirt Life show, he was talking about sending a full-on, uh, I don't know if it was a, C, a new Corvette C8, but he was sending – a rental car uh, in Las Vegas. He posted a video on our Facebook page. You should go check it out. It's pretty badass. So, uh, oh man, it keeps saying Dustin's unable to join. So we'll see if we can get him on here. Tell about that hillbilly smoke signal. I know, dude. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch, for chiming in. Hopefully, he can uh, find a connection and get on with us. Uh, if any of you guys want to join and talk with Dustin as well, you guys can uh, jump in. We'll see if he can uh, come on and uh, hang out with us. But any of you guys are more than welcome to join right now, too, while Dustin sees if he can uh, get us get a signal. Side-by-side, guys. Let's see if uh, Zach can join us right now. What's up, Eric? <laughs> Dude, you should have told me. I was... Yeah, look at you, baby. Yo, yo, what up? What's up, Zach? How are you? I'm here at UTV Takeover Grundy, Virginia. Behind me is a huge vendor row and a whole bunch of riding going on with a bunch of crazy people. So we're having a bunch of fun out here in Virginia. Hey, man, you got a, b- a better signal than Dustin Battleaxe Jones. <laughs> well, I went uh, into this this uh, awesome like complex, this vendor center they have. They got some awesome Wi-Fi up here. So. Oh, right on. That worked out good. Can you help Dustin and get him that same Wi-Fi, please? <laughs> well, he's... He should be somewhere around this side of the country. I'm sure I can just take a bike over there. Yeah, who knows where he's at, man. Are you hey, taking off to? Yeah, shout out Ruslan for his birthday, I heard. Ruslan is officially a teenager today. He just turns 13. We are going to, I don't know if he's watching this, but we got a special little surprise for him at the uh, rock and roll bingo going on here shortly at 10 o'clock. Uh, oh, right so on. we got we got a little something for him and, and uh, say thank you and happy birthday. We're going to have about a couple hundred people all sing happy birthday to him, so. Dang, that'll be pretty cool, right? Check this out. Look at all these people. Dang, dude. You guys so, have it going on. The so opera have... said, why do we have to be called crazy people? Well, Brad, you know, come on. Let's get real. We're all a little bit crazy. I saw your guys' van at Cesar Chavez Park. Uh, the van. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Nice hat, bud. Yeah, Zach's got a cool hat going on, huh? What do you think of the new BITD rules? Mitch, give me a little bit more info on the Best in the Desert rules. Is that for Vegas? 
So they actually announced a number of changes, and I think some of it includes some unlimited class stuff. So maybe we'll see something interesting soon. Oh, that's right. I remember hearing something about that stuff. It'll be in, it will be definitely interesting. Uh, any Theros in the Maxis rig over there? Oh, why are those Theros like hard to come by these days? <laughs> any of those good tires are hard to come by. Right now, they got a bunch of um, uh, Rock Villa Yeah, those are the, the the popular ones, right? UTV Overlander, the bearded hippie, probably selling shrooms. <laughs> He's down in uh, Winchester at uh, Dune Fest, uh, another Dune show. Let me try to request Dustin if the signal's gotten any better. Uh, it's yeah, because you got so sunburnt last time. You need a hat this time, right? I did. Well, I was supposed to get one of these hats last time, and they sold out on the first day. So, um, you know, hopefully, I got a little ahead of the game, and uh, and we'll have a little better experience. Desert Squadron. A lot of turbo cars won't qualify for turbo anymore, and we'll have to. It's going to be a big shakeup. It will be pretty interesting to see. Like, uh, I'll have to look at the rules to see exactly what. He probably brought them from Oregon. <laughs> Don't the best mushrooms come from Oregon? Yes, that I've been told is true. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get Dustin on for a little bit here, but he may not have a, a good cell phone signal. Um, I want want you all to meet my my buddy Fred. <laughs> He's a little excited to be on the show today, so just give him some patience. He'll he'll calm down. He's like a deer in headlights. Oh, look at Oh, snap. My dudes. <laughs> what up, homie? Bro, listen to me. I just rolled into Austin. You ever felt like you've been catfished by an Air- Airbnb? Oh, yeah. That's why. <laughs> Let me just show you this. So, me, Cowboy Cerrone, uh, Quentin, some of the other S3 guys all come into Austin for like a few days. This is what we rolled into, cuz. And let me tell you right now, oh, if, you yeah. ain't got a, if you ain't got a 90s model Z71 that's ready for the rev limiter. <laughs> Dude. Ace oh, has so. tires on her, too. He's already. Bruh, straight bro truck. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you got the if tubs you, and everything. So if you're wondering why I don't have good sales signal, it's uh, because I'm fixing to have to fight all these gangbangers back here for my Airb- Airbnb. Hey, you know do, what? Not, do not open any of those trash cans because you don't know what we'll, you'll find in there. There's so many flies around that thing. So we're just figuring this out together. We're checking this place out. Anyways, sorry about taking so long. Hey, I feel, now. Zach, I kind of feel like right now, Dustin's like uh, showing up to the real world house on TV first. He's, like, <laughs> he's going to pick his room. Well, did we just run through and take our shirt off right now? Just start running <laughs> through the house with the shirt off? For real. Just go flying in there. Hey, well, First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to join us, Dustin. Uh, Zach just jumped on. He's over there. Where do you say you're at in Virginia? We're at Grundy, Virginia. So we're in the kind of the heart of all of it. And uh, there's just basically hundreds of miles of hills and trees and trails around us. So Not hundreds of miles of trash cans. and uh, <laughs> That sounds uh, – uh, that's where Hatfield and McCoy and stuff is up that way, right? Yeah, we're just real close to that. Yeah, the trail system connects to that. They have the spearhead trail system. And that connects all to that to that area. Yeah, I just don't understand why you hadn't invited me out there to ride yet. If you I don't know. Uh, if, if you live right there by all of that. Well, I don't. I live in Washington, so I'm way out of my league. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Makes sense. You get to ride sense. this or ride this week, Zach, or no? Well, uh, I was planning on it, and I did a little bit last night. But see, the problem is, is that Friday I decided to completely total my Subaru on the on the freeway. And I have a whole bunch of bruised ribs, a whole masked up hand, and a bunch of other stuff going on. So when I went when I went out, I got pretty beat up last night. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry for the Subaru too. Yeah, yeah, she was a good girl back there. I don't know who that is. Yeah, that's your that's your uh, room service. They're uh, they're coming to fluff your pillow. Yes, concierge. I'm going to tell you, when you see MS-13 uh, painted on the side of the, the fences when you pull in, you're in a <laughs> dicey well, area. I th- I feel like it's a good thing that you're on Instagram Live, just in case. So now we got uh, a few people that can, like, ma- verify if anything happens to Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's such a, tr- a true statement. So Hey, what so, you- all right. I have, uh, Zach, before you, I know you got to bail pretty quick. Before you bail, did you have a question for Dustin? Well, I want to know is why you guys down south have a hesitation to eat spicy food. 
Man, I don't know who you're hanging out with from down south that's truly from down south, but the hotter the better for us, dude. Don't none of my buddies hold back from me eating hot food. Well, I got a special little something coming your way. I've already sent you a couple things. Oh, I got, you're talking about you're talking about the bullet I've been dodging. <laughs> you've bruh. been you've been dodging harder than a, a whore in church, bro. Bro, that's not eating spicy food. You're trying to send me through the Taco Bell drive-through with all bean burritos, dude. <laughs> dude. I'm in. Listen, we I know we've been talking about that for a while. You send me the whole care pack. Let's. Uh, I got let's another one. I got challenge. a second package coming. You got hey, two packages. I I, t- I tasted those other chips that were in the regular bag. They taste like shit. Yeah, yeah dude. Nothing. I just they, I thought they were regular potato chips when I ate them. Yeah, yeah. And, well, you got <laughs> you got your you got your original pocky chip. You got two more new pocky chips coming out, made oh. with Pepper X, and right. and they teamed up with a Pucker Butt Pepper Company. Oh, and they you're did. really going to start feeling it. So, yeah. Is that like uh, a thank you. Thank you for well, that. that. I'm going to tell you in advance. I really appreciate it. So let me know when you're ready. We'll get it well, going. Well, I sent you two so you can get someone else to share uh, the misery with. So That's a you're solid, welcome. solid idea. Hey, so Dustin, I told the, like I told my crew chief and I told one other dude that likes going to eat tacos out here in Southern California. I was like, yeah, these fuckers want to try to kill me with this hockey challenge. Like, I'm going to die. Like, they're like, well, we'll die with you. So I was like, Zach, can you please send me two more chips so we can have three dead bodies in one? I feel like probably Quentin or Cowboy would come along on that ride with me. But let's be real. We probably need to schedule it for after Vegas Torino because if I end oh. up with like an <laughs> ulcer or something from eating these chips and I got to pull out of Vegas Torino, it's over. Well, I think it's we need over. to break the internet and do it while you're driving Vegas to Reno. Solid plan. Uh, we'll just we'll mix we'll it up put in, it my, in the uh, helmet. Back. Yeah, yeah, we'll just put it in the helmet and you'll just do yeah. the uh, uh, thing. Yeah, and we'll get it done. First thing. Yeah. That I feel was, like that's a good plan. That would suck so bad, dude. <laughs> that would yeah. Suck so bad. <laughs> it uh, make for a long race for an already long race. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't want to just talk about Pocky Chips, but that's it right there. We're going to definitely die, Dustin. Uh, My worst nightmare. All right, Zach. So I got a couple more questions for Dustin. I wanted to know, uh, Zach, did you know that Dustin used to uh, practice or somewhat fight MMA or boxing? Well, I was curious. He's been hanging out with these boys so much. Eventually, he's going to slip and he's going to challenge somebody. And we might not see Dustin again after that. That's where I was going with this whole conversation. I was like, if he can already throw, then has does anybody know in that camp that he can throw a little bit? No, well, dude, I, I try to keep that a secret. Like, I did that for several years. but I feel like that's every, every, I, I was like asking for it if you bring that up with that camp, right? Yeah, you definitely don't want to bring it around Cowboys camp. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what training you've done or how cool or bad you think you are, like, Bro, his group's got some rowdy boys in it. You know what I mean? They're good dudes, but that's not the place to be flexing on people. You know what that's I'm saying? Exactly, I mean, like like the dude that says, oh, I could race. I could beat you guys. And you're like, yeah. oh, oh, here we go. It's those messages that I get every week. Like, man, I just don't understand why you're monster and can't am sponsored. Like, you can't be that fast. I'm like, oh, yeah. You're yeah. welcome. You're welcome to <laughs> give it a try. I, I, Dude, I'm the fastest guy on my campsite at the dunes. I hit full throttle in those whoops. Oh, dude, they were so stretched out. But I'll be honest with you, it's always tempting. Like, when you're hanging out with Cowboy, like, we were out at uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming last night before we uh, flew here this morning. Like, we were hanging out at the Outlaw Saloon, and it always runs across your mind a little bit. You're like, I just wonder how bad he really is. Like, I think I want to give it a try. And then you're like... Uh, maybe tonight's not the night. You know what no. I mean? Let's just <laughs> let's wait a little longer. To just check, dude. So I have you? Out. I would be deathly afraid of getting it. that, dude. Oh, uh, Hubert uh, chimed in and said, <laughs> "Better get that endorsement deal from Charmin or Quilted Quilted Northern." Dude, that's who we need to call for sponsorship on that episode. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pep- Pepto Bismol or something. So, Seriously. so have you been training with actual people, or were you training like noodling out in the mud with with the catfish? Like, what, what kind of training like, have you done? Man, I used to fight like farm animals and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I just fought out of necessity because we had some the real pig. mean goats and pigs around the house. I really only fought because I had to. And um, we won't we won't blow them out of the water, Zach. But Dustin could throw a little bit. I I did I did train for several years and I had a couple of fights too and so I did it just like because I loved it for the art of it not necessarily because like I ran around starting trouble or fighting people I did it because I loved love fighting so 
we just finished that kids camp, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, we got some free time, like one of the last nights with the kids and we, uh, we got to get in there and train. And so that felt really good to kind of be back in the gym sparring and kicking and punching a little bit. So yes, I did do that. I don't talk about that much. I don't say much about it cause I did it cause I truly enjoyed the sport and the, uh, to me, racing is, is fulfilling that, that, uh, same spot that fighting did for me. So I've always liked team sports, baseball, football, like playing all that stuff, but you can always blame a loss on somebody. You know what I mean? You see it a lot. Like, man, the quarterback was off this week or like, dude, my, my boy dropped a pop fly in the outfield in fighting. And to me also in racing, it's one V one. It's like the most purest form of competition or combat. And so that's why, I absolutely loved fighting when I was doing that. And that's why I enjoy racing so much. So like, I can't blame a driving mistake on somebody. I can't say it's somebody else's fault that I didn't get there. Or I hit that rock or something like that. Like it's the purest form of competition to me. Yeah, exactly. It's one person. Go, go, now, go. Is, now, is that why every podcast has a segment of about 15 to 20 minutes of where you guys are getting in trouble at some bar or some hallway or some back alley? I Dude. swear, every, you, you might as well just have an intro music for that segment of the show. I, it doesn't make any sense because we talked about this the other night. Uh, we were at, actually at family dinner, and my my sister and my parents were kind of asking me, like, uh, you know, how do y'all how do y'all end up in so much trouble? Like, it seems like everywhere y'all go, <laughs> trouble kind of follows you. And uh, I honestly was like, I don't know. I think it's because. You know, when you don't shy away from confrontation and you're like, whatever, man, like, I mean, we're here to have a good time, too. So if y'all want to get down, we'll all get down. Then I think uh, it kind of finds its way to you, you know, like I think a lot of people try to avoid and like get away if they see something popping off. And we're always just like, well, let's just see what happens. And so it turns into fortunately, we don't ever get crossed up with nobody, but it always ends up in some good stories. We did get real close a couple of times uh, about a month ago when Cowboy came down. But uh, they dropping bombs on you, bro. What's going on? Yeah, dude. Look, this is what I'm saying. That's like the third plane that's come by. It says DEA on the bottom, and it keeps flying around here. I mean, those houses don't look bad. The side bottom looks pretty decent. I mean, from the video angle, it looks pretty crispy. Bro, the the houses are nice. Like I thought it was cool. Uh, but when you look over the fence, that's when it gets sketchy. When you look down the street, you know what I mean. I'm just going. I'm just going to hold y'all up over the fence right quick. Whoa. <laughs> hey, so, so where did you say you were at, though? Uh, we're over in Austin, Texas. So we're getting ready uh, tomorrow. There's a really cool uh, rally-ready driving school that's over here. And so we're going to spend a day out there driving rally cars and, like, ripping around on their track. We brought our uh, a couple of our X3s and stuff like that. So we're going to spend the day out there tomorrow just ripping around, hanging out, taking people for rides and, like uh, – Saturday night, we're having a cookout, and we're watching the UFCs on, like, a big blow-up projector and, like, just hanging out with people. And it's a thing that, that we started not long ago, that we're hitting these different parks, like, kind of across the country. And so we show up. We bring our own rigs. We hang out Friday night. Saturday, we do a big group ride where people come and ride with, like, me and the S3 boys. Cowboy Cerrone comes with us pretty regularly. We were talking last night to Chase Outlaw, the PBR bull rider. He's going to come do one with us. And so we just hit these different spots all over the country. And it's just show up, ride Friday, group ride on Saturday, cook out Saturday night, and we watch the UFCs together on like a big blow-up Jumbotron thing. So, Dang, that sounds actually pretty fun. Dude, it's so cool, man. And people get so fired up just to go ride with you and like hang out and just do fun stuff. So tomorrow's continuing another one of those. And, uh, yeah, we're out here at the Rally Ready place. See, hopefully you guys make it that you don't get freaking hijacked in the Airbnb. Dude, I know. I don't know. They they did the Instagram uh, filter on me with this one for sure. <laughs> they put they put lipstick on a pig, you know what I mean? Uh, Lunatic Racing Team says y'all should go out to Georgia and do that. Well, I'm sure they have plans to do it in other locations. Absolutely. We've already had several different parks, and it's really been like uh, – you know, people see, saw us do the first one out at Muddy Bottoms, and then now this is the second one. And now it's just been people hitting us up like, hey, we would like you guys to come out to our park, ride, do that whole same setup, group ride, meet and greets, uh, watch the fights with people. And so it's really starting to turn into something that we were just like, man, let's just go ride and hang out with people. You know what I mean? I think that's super cool. Plus, you get to hang out and see, like, all the other people that are, uh, well, fans, racing fans of the sport, fans side by side. So yeah, you guys, uh, you know, it's cool. 
it's cool when you hang out with like uh you know the ufc fighters we had dominic reyes over uh the ufc fighter down at our place the other day and you really hanging out with chase outlaw last night like you really only see those guys like when they ride the bull they you see that eight seconds of them being a professional athlete you see cowboy freaking out eyebrows down pacing the cage like ready to punch somebody in the face but you don't think like there's there's dudes behind those guys you know what i mean like there's somebody they got a story they're a cool dude and for me i don't want to be that guy i don't want to just be the race car that blows by or hits the big jump or like you see flying by and then the podium speaks like i want people to come hang out like i want to meet people i want to hang out with people that like the things that i like and so dude what better way by just traveling the country and hitting these parks and just hanging out with people Okay, so we got a couple more comments, but May May uh, asked if she, uh, he or she could join and talk about uh, trying to get into race. So, yeah, for sure, jump in and ask a question. Just keep it PG-13 over here. That's yeah, of a, course. That's a grade-A man candy mullet you got there, buddy. Woo, just letting her eat, cuz. I had to get her shined up for Cheyenne. <laughs> <laughs> got her all tuned up. Man, we got her dialed in. We was cowboyed up last night, so, uh, yeah, we had to get it tightened up right before we went. Frank Maria said that, uh, yeah. He saw it looked like Sperone back. Hold on just a second. Ask it again. You were cutting out. Oh, are you getting the drive by going on right now? Yeah, another one. That one just <laughs> says FBI on the bottom of it. <laughs> uh, Daniel says, Can we get a yee yee? Yee yee! Y'all already know. Everywhere we go, boy. That's when we that's when you know we're rolling in and rolling out when we show up with the yee yees. Uh, so, May May, we actually tried to invite you in. It looks like you might have chickened out, buddy. If you want to ask a question, we can try to answer it for you, too. Uh, sadly, people have more acquaintances than friends nowadays. Yeah. yeah, I know, man. I know. That's why we want to move around, dude, to meet people and uh, hang out with people, dude. I don't know. There's just not enough of that, especially with everything that's happened in the past couple of years. Like, there's just not enough people having a good time together and hanging out, dude. I want to, we want to, I want to be that guy. You know what I mean? Like, dude, when Dustin shows up, we're going to have fun. That means a lot to everybody, though. I think you'd be surprised at how uh, emotionally uh, elevated people get, like, through the next weeks. Like, I have a really cool story about it. Like, when you have that uh, uh, physical high over the weekend, it makes your whole week more productive. You're welding more pipe. You're digging more ditches. You're cutting more hair. Like, everything happens such a bigger, like, your whole week just improves after Dustin shows up. <laughs> and, dude, I always try to be that guy. And I think I've, I think you and I have talked about it before. But there's been a few times in my life that I've met people that I really looked up to. And it was one of two scenarios, like they really made a positive impression on me and it was a great experience. And there's been ones that, you know, I did, I wasn't really happy with the outcome or they weren't the person that I thought they were. And so I always want to be that dude that when people leave, they're like, man, he's freaking fun, dude. Like he's cool to hang out with. He's a good time. Yeah. Uh, Dustin, did you pick up those uh, Cheater George yet? Oh yeah, dude. I got some custom ones getting built right now. They're at the motor shop. <laughs> they're over at a little place called they're over at a little place called warranty killers you know what i mean <laughs> what's up dudes what's up man y'all doing all right? right we we had uh travis it sounds like he might have been one of the kids he said uh what up dustin he's already missing camp oh man that was one of uh me and quentin just did that kids camp over at uh Cerrone's place travis was one of the little dudes that was out there with us man did awesome he was uh he was a big part of our uh, our little team that we had going on. So man, How was super. It, it looks so fun, dude. It it was as much a learning experience for us as it was for those kids. To be honest, like we just went out there, like man, let's let these little dudes just run wild and have the most fun that they can, dude. And it turned into uh to something really special. Like you you can ask ask Quentin. Like when we brought them in at the beginning of the week, we made them all introduce themselves. It was thirty eight kids. We made them all introduce themselves at the beginning camp, tell us what they like, what they're into, all of that stuff. And at the end of camp, they had to do the same thing. But their timidness at the beginning of camp and then their confidence at the end of the camp was uh, – it was it was drastically different between the two. And the whole week, like, naturally when they come around us, you got to tear them down a little bit. You know what I mean? you got to do these dudes military style. It's, they're 12 to 16-year-old, mostly boys. And you just got to break them down, you know what I mean? And just let them know, like, this is not the place for it. And then you build them back up, man, and uh, it turned out to be a really good thing. So it was an unbelievable experience, dude. And for sure, it was life-changing for some of those kids. 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, Zach will agree with me on this. These are significant emotional events for these kids to go through. Not only do they get to hang out with you guys, uh, Cowboy, you know, Quentin, your whole team. Like, it's really cool to see that. But they got all kinds of different life lessons. They got all kinds of different sports lessons. Yes. And they get to go and tell all their friends about it. Like, how sick is that? Dude, total once-in-a-lifetime experience. And for sure, we spent our time that week like we – literally took them out talk took them through how to jump start a vehicle like start to finish in case their mom was broke down on the side of the road and how to change a tire and fa- find the spare tire not with like a pro eagle jack like we use but how to get the one out of the car and like that whole process so we tried to teach them true life skills that week but uh man it was an experience dude it was uh it, it was we're gonna do it at least at least one time a year we may do two times a year and we were just talking about the other day i think we're gonna do a grown-ups camp maybe uh towards the end of this year with uh with veterans to bring them out there and do the same <laughs> thing so man. more difficult though <laughs> do what it's gonna be so much more harder to teach grown-ups. oh though. dude i i can imagine i can hey, imagine for is sure oh there yeah quinn's standing right here hey, what, was, what was your favorite part about the kids camp Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Well, I mean, you know, staying humble. Uh, That's <laughs> not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we battled with uh, with everybody to uh, to get our Ws, so uh, that was cool. But, no, really, man, like just said, seeing the kids transform, man, it was it was something we don't get to see often. We're around a bunch of older people all the time and all of us, and um, I don't know. I was kind of taken back by the whole experience, so it – the, the learning experience for me was cool, dude, just to see all the kids, you know, minds be molded. And, and, and like I said, everything kind of changed throughout the camp and stuff. And uh, um, it was it was a little bit of a hectic slowdown, if you want to call it that for us, man. So it was, it was really cool. It was a cool experience. So hopefully we yeah. get to do, like Dustin said, uh, plan them more often because um, all of us really enjoyed it. You know, you didn't really know what to expect going into it. And then uh, we all like, man, the days are long, but um, – short by the end of the night when we got down to it and talking about it and how much fun it was, man, we, we had no idea what kind of experience it was going to be. Was there something that like, uh, cause we saw a bunch of it on social media. Did you see most of it on social media, Zach? Yeah, I saw, I saw him posting and, and I've been super busy with the event and everything, but I just wanted to point uh, back to what you were saying about, you know, the confidence building. Um, I think it's super important for, for kids to be around leaders that have positive influence in their confidence like there's a lot of people that try to influence children with um maybe more uh, abrasive confidence and it's super important that they can see that that confidence can be a positive attitude not just a reaction and you know when when a situation happens you know if they're taught the other way that that those are the people that get built up to be stressful and uh loud and uh, a a grind and abrasive and when you when you're taught and brought up with a positive influence that has uh just a positive mindset someone that's you know you don't have to be upset you you can be happy in the situation because you're confident in that you know how to handle it and i think that's really important when you guys were there at the at the camp like what was one thing that wasn't on social media that you guys remember or that stood out dude it's gonna uh man i hate to even tell this story and i'll leave the names out of it because it will make me tear up trying to tell this story so the first night there was this little boy um, that didn't say anything the whole time. We didn't even see his parents drop him off. So he just kind of wandered up the driveway with his bags. I personally, and I, Quinn, you, I don't remember seeing his parents drop him off. No, his, his grandparents did, but no, we didn't see him. It was kind of a dip in and out deal. And so this is going to get a little, little lengthy, but like it gives me chills just sitting here talking about it. I want to tell you about it. So little boy. Didn't say a word, kind of stood over by himself, was really a small little boy. One of the, I don't know, he was probably 13, 14. So he was one of the the lower aged kids. And so it came time for uh, for like share, show and tell or share time or whatever at the bonfire the very first night of the whole kids camp. And little boy introduced himself and he did not make it five words and introduced himself and just started bawling, crying. And so really? certainly... Yeah, certainly he had something going on. Uh, but so the way he opened up was, uh, hello, my name is so-and-so. And when I was three years old, my dad left me. And then uh, mm, he said, um, you know, just a few weeks ago, my stepdad left me. And so it wasn't my my dad left our family or left my mom 
or my stepdad left me and my mom, he said, my dad left me and my stepdad left me. And so, um, you know, we kind of tried to finish introducing himself and everything. And so as that week goes on, we made sure like all the little bit older kids would include him in everything and like encourage him and push him. And so me and Quentin and Cowboy got to talking to him one night about like, hey, dude, what, what are you into? Like he didn't say much all week. He didn't hardly speak to anybody. He just was like there kind of participating. So we were like, what are you into? And of course, he was into video games and he was into uh, into uh, what was the game? Call, Call of Duty. OK, yeah. Call of Duty. He was into Call of Duty. So we were like asking, what's your gamer tag so that, you know, Quentin and uh, Dustin Henderson, some of those guys can play with you. Told us the gamer tag. He's like, cool. So what do you play on? Do you play on PlayStation? Do you play on Xbox? He's like, no, um, I play on my cell phone. His grandparents' cell phone. His grandparents' cell phone. So we were oh, like, what? Why? He's like, yeah, I've been playing that for a little while because my stepdad took my Xbox whenever he left. Ben Mays Racing just said he's been playing a lot with that kid on Xbox. And so he said his uh, step by, stepdad took his Xbox whenever he left. And so, uh, you know, immediately, like, because that, that struck a chord with that little boy. He just would, he instantly, he was fired up, just telling us everything, telling us his favorite weapon, <laughs> where his moves are. And so uh, that night, me, uh, Quentin, Cowboy, and Donald, one of Cowboy's buddies, went and got him a uh, an Xbox 360 and, like, as many games as we could find and a headset yeah. and a controller. And we kept it until the very last night. And so the last night when everybody was, like, sharing their final thoughts, we gave him a uh, signed Xbox from all of us for him to take home. And yeah, so, dude. That's, that's such a solid move. Bro, he was a little boy freaking bawling, crying, and uh, didn't know who to thank, didn't know what to say. So that was for sure the most memorable event for me. Yeah, yeah I think uh, like Dustin said, that was the that was the turning point of the camp because no, all we knew about it was, hey, we're going, y'all going to be counselors, it's going to be competition style. So we think it's going to be a ton of like natural athletes. Well, uh, Donald picked a bunch of different personality types, some alpha, some some kids that would normally not hang out together. And so it was like that night at the campfire, like it all changed for us. The camp were like, man, now we know why we really are here and what's going to happen, you know? So that was, it was, it was super cool, man. Hey, so big life lesson learned there for not only him, but for every single other kid in camp to bring, like you said, bring everybody up. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That was the one thing in camp that struck him. And it was the only time he really got out and wanted to talk about something. And we were like, dude, if that means that much to you, like you deserve to, to have that moment. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we had a couple of people trying to request to join, but uh, bailed out, chickened out again. Uh, First of all, I got to say hello to Karen, which is Sean. <laughs> share bear. <laughs> share bear. Share. She's been hitting uh, some the comments quite a bit. So I got to say, what's up to Karen? Uh, the Dune and Destroy guy said, uh, Dustin, we want uh, an on foot race for <laughs> cutting off jean jorts. Hope to see you in Utah, UTV takeover. Oh, dude, I'll foot race. I'll I'll race on handstands. I'll I'll bear crawl race. I'll race to cut a pair of jorts. It doesn't matter to me. We're actually just fixing to uh, release my signature line of jorts pretty soon. So uh, keep your eyes out for those bad boys. That's solid. Hey, so we got a, a show that we're doing on Monday with a guy that you might know, Corbin Leverton and uh, Cody yeah. Bradford. Uh, and uh, Corbin had some pretty thick ones, dude. They look like they're like Gucci. They're like next level George, dude. They were pretty sick yesterday. Yeah, but he buys his. You know what I mean? He don't make his. He just yeah. goes up to. Uh... It's the Southern California. I'm not judging. <laughs> right. Real jorts are made after you work in them so long, you blow the knees out, and then they get turned into jorts. Hey, so let's take it back to the side by side. May May uh, asked who who could build uh, talk to about building a razor. Well, like let's ask the first question: Where do you live? Because S three can build a razor pretty good still. Uh, and there's a bunch of people on the West Coast and in the Midwest that can actually help you out too. So maybe tell us where you live, buddy. Uh, when are you coming back out to Texplex? Um, we're actually going out there I th right after Vegas to Reno. There's another race. So we'll be out there at Texplex, uh, uh, racing and playing out there. So we got a bunch of cars, a bunch of S3 chassis that run out there. The Miller brothers are running our cars, a bunch of other guys, uh, run out there. And so, I mean, that's only like two and a half hours from my house. So we hit that place as much as we can. If you hadn't had an opportunity, you can ask, you know, RJ Anderson, the Kyle Cheney, Miller brothers, Corbin Leverton, uh, my boy, Hamill here. Oh, man, it's just a great place to go ride. If you want to ride and race and really have some serious competition, 
uh, Tex Place is a good place to race for sure. Okay, so we got a couple more questions. Uh, Let's hit them. Where uh, the heck is DH? Um, is he still flying down? No, no. He was talking about driving down tonight just to hang out for the next couple of days. So Dustin Henderson is actually holding it down at the fort. You know, he was going with us to kids camp, and so it's tough for him to be gone like a few weeks in a row like that. So DH Big is usually right beside us, dude, ride or die, but he didn't make it this time. Big business guy over there. Oh, Mei Mei said that uh, he, he or she, I don't know if it's a girl or a guy, but they live in Georgia. So, yeah, S3, dude. Have Absolutely. Take, bring the Razor down there. Have them fix you up, dude. They can build you a badass car. You just got to tell them what series you're doing if you want to do desert racing, short course, whatever it is. And we built them all. Daniel Adams, you're so crazy. <laughs> so dreamy. Um, yeah, we built them all. King of the Hammers chassis, short course chassis, best in the desert chassis, like whatever you want. We can build a full roller. We can build one that you're going to assemble. We can build a turnkey car. We can do the bare minimum to pass tech. Whatever you want, buddy, we can get you hooked up. <laughs> the bare minimum to pass tech. I love it. Bro, sometimes you roll like that. Hey, that's how Cowboy rolls. He's just like, make sure it'll pass, and I'm going to race it that way. Uh, Is that about- an official package you can buy? Is that a checkbox huh? on the website? Like, just barely... Yeah, hold everything it's like, just uh, barely. It's the like the rental car. <laughs> it's like the rental car return the keys policy. You know, we've got the uh, barely past tech builds. If you want that, uh, what's the easiest way for them to contact you? Man, hit up our website s 3 powersportscom That's all our contacts on there. You can ask for Logan. You can ask for Daniel. You can ask for me. You can ask for Dustin. Um, and any of the guys can take care of you. So just s 3 powersportscom is the easiest way to find us. Make sure you tell them the Dirt Life sent you so we could get some credit and Dustin give me a big old fat hug next time I see him. Man, hey, uh, what? Uh, oh, you, you already talked about it a little bit. I think this person might have just logged in. What about Rally Ready with Cowboy next weekend? Yeah, it's actually a uh, day after tomorrow we'll be doing that. So we're going to drive the, some of the rally cars tomorrow. And then Saturday, uh, we're taking our X3s out there. Quentin's got his. I've got my play car. And uh, I brought a rental for Cowboy. And so we're just going to be ripping around people on the track, on the rally car track. Uh, they can bring their own vehicles out to ride. They can go to uh, Uncharted Society to book. You mean so, they can bring rental cars out there to drive. Oh, yeah. We got a Suburban. Did you see the Suburban in the driveway? It's going to see some air. It's going to yeah. see as much air as I saw from Denver to Austin, Texas today, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, so uh, we had uh, Travis Pointer came on, and he was talking about how he uh, just – he goes to Vegas, uh, a.k.a. Mexico, yeah, uh, goes to Vegas, rents the exotic cars. I think his dad got like a four eight eight. Yeah, he got like a I don't know a new C eight or whatever. And they yep. found some dips, and they were stepping these things, dude. Like they were <laughs> to, to full skid plate. Like oh my god, it sounded like they would drop a brick or just a big anvil right onto the street. They were sending them so hard, dude. Tra- Travis is wild man. If there's anybody that can tear something up, it's it's Travis Pointer. That dude, he can wheel. But he will definitely tear some things up. Those he, rental uh, cars. He said it takes, you know how you can go back to the rental car company and they'll sign the waiver and you can just bail out. Like once you sign your waiver, you're good. He said it oh, takes yeah. him a while to review the car after he returns it before he gets his waiver back. Dude, he'll get to pro level status when you have to start putting it under other people's names because your name is flagged. <laughs> <laughs> so right uh, now, quit. Quentin hadn't been able to rent a car for like six months. This so is true. They sent me a two thousand dollar bill the other month. Oh, do, do you remember the red Ford Ranger that we had for like a week? <laughs> yeah. That we ran the piece of rebar down the side of by accident when we were rock crawling. Yeah. Yeah. And you got he ended to, up you having got to that off the side of the highway, right? Yes. yes. He ended up having to pay for that truck. <laughs> and it was like six months later before they came up, but now yeah. now he can't rent through Enterprise anymore. Is it still? Is that truck still around? Uh, it was still driving when we dropped it off. I asked him if I could buy it. You know what I'm saying for market value with the damage. If I was going to pay for it, and I didn't get a response. J Hooks, <laughs> J Hooks. If you want to know about the insurance, just ask him about the uh, the Q and D return the keys policy. They'll let you know. You bring the keys back. It doesn't even have to be a car. You just bring the keys back, and you can leave. It's worked four times. That's worked four times with no bill after the fact. The Ford Ranger, I think, is where they drew the line because it was nice. <laughs> That's so <laughs> crazy. And so I had a, like, there was this dude that I used to work with in the computer job stuff, and he didn't have anything to do with racing. He's just this English dude from England, who to Southern California. He goes, uh, I had a rough morning. And I go, what, the, what, what happened? Like, why'd you have a rough morning? He's like, my wife told me she wanted a divorce last night. So I took the rental car out, drove it straight into a wall, 
left it there and walked over to the office. And I'm like, what the heck? Are you serious? He's like, yeah. And I got the guy called me from the rental car company. He goes, what'd you do? He goes, I drove it straight into a wall. Here's the keys. That was it. Done. The story was over. I was like, dude, that is the nuttiest story I've ever heard. There was no punchline? Nothing. That's it. Yeah, the, the, uh, the reason I had to pay for the 2500 bucks was they seen it on my social media. There's a clause in their insurance. <laughs> George, what kind of dudes do you hang out with that do some psychotic, some American psycho stuff like that? I don't know. This I, He was just a work, like a guy at work, and a, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, an affiliate, not a friend. But I, he came into work <laughs> looking ragged, and I was like, dude, what's wrong? He's like, I drove a car into a wall. That was it. No punch, nothing. And then he like, said, <laughs> then he said, took his big gulp and said, well, see you later. <laughs> and walked off. Actually, he's from England, so he's drinking tea. Oh, took his tea and said, well, <laughs> see you later. He just, just went back off. to the office. So, you know, I was work. I'm like, that dude is so hard. I got to leave. I got to go to the office because I have nothing else on him. Like, like, <laughs> Man, that'll make you evaluate your own life. You hear a story like that. Jeez. I, I tell you what. Hey, so um, are you guys going to raise? Say it again. Something cut out. Are we in a what? Vegas Arena. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's what we're getting ready for right now. So um, the car is final prepped. Apparently, there's qualifying now for Vegas Arena. And so we're going to have to prep our car twice. We're taking the car out there to run qualifying. And then we're changing everything on the car that night after qualifying. All the axles, all the drive line. The only thing that we'll leave on there is all the parts that we build, all of our suspension. We won't have to change that. But axles, hubs, knuckles, brakes, differential, like we're changing everything so that Vegas Arena, we've got a fresh core. Dang, that's going to be pretty – that's going to be a fire drill after the, the qualifying, huh? Yeah, man, qualifying is one of those tough things in a side-by-side, right? It's really it's really hard on them. It's really hard on them because we have to run them 100%. You can't take that straight from qualifying to run Vegas Arena, in my opinion. No, I'm yeah, sure a lot of people will. Especially the axles because they get – Rest with the uh, ball joints and stuff. Uh, 100%. Corey Rouse says, uh, when are you going to Glamis? The guys that do and destroy also wonder if you're going to Glamis here. So it's top secret right now. I'm not supposed to say, but uh, we will anyways. We will anyways. We're building a car for uh, a gentleman with the initials of KB that's known to drive pretty rapidly. And, uh, and we're all going out to uh, Glamis for a certain – holiday that you wouldn't wear your normal attire for oh that'll be fun <laughs> and you would knock on people's doors so there's so, a big group i wonder if he's gonna have that same sticker kit because that sticker kit's looking fresh oh yeah oh yeah so sure. normally i do special attire on my birthday so are Ooh. we saying are we doing birthday suits or what what's going on <laughs> if that's your attire of choice it with me it's <laughs> run what you brung you know what i mean just show up and run it well he's so. from He's from the Pacific Northwest, so he can handle cold, no problem. Oh, it's true. Oh, yeah, you're good then. So, yeah, I think <laughs> we're going to hit uh, – we are going to hit Glamis uh, towards the end of this year. Um, and, obviously, we're going to blow it out. Like, we're going to do the group ride. We're going to have a big time. We're going to be watching the fights at one night. And so uh, so we're going to hit Glamis this year. Hey, so you guys went and, and took over people's fight night at their houses. Oh, dude. Dude, what was that like? Like, just knocking on someone's door. Oh, man. So, like, we went through this whole strategy when we got together on this deal. Because um, we knew they would be jacked about it if we put it out there like, hey, he's in town with us. We're going to hit these spots. Drop your pin, and then this city, send me a location. We'll show up. But I tried to put on there, like, really specific. Like, look, listen, be fair. Like, if you're having a party, if you're having a cookout, if you got people over, let us know. We'll show up, and we'll crash this down. We'll kick the door off the hinges, eat all your food, and roll out. And so we picked like eight parties to go to. Three of them was dudes sitting on their couch by themselves. <laughs> One of them was in his underwear when we knocked on the door. And I'm, dude, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, those, those three dudes that were at home by themselves watching the fights whenever like we came in there, and obviously Cowboy, because he's, he's the fighter, the UFC fighter. Um, whenever he walked through the door, like those dudes, they would run back to their bedroom and then run back to the kitchen. Like, dude, they didn't know what to do, man. It was, it's another one of those things, like I talked about earlier. Like, when we go to these rides, I want to meet people. Like, I want to yeah. hang out with people, dude. I want to get to know, like, what do you ride? Where do you ride? Like, let's go to your place sometime. And, dude, Cowboy's that same breed, man. He will, he it was his idea, like, hey, 
let's just show up at people's UFC parties and I'll just be like, what's up, y'all? Like, I want to watch with y'all. And, man, you just – you can't imagine what it means to people when you do stuff like that. That's pretty cool, man. Could you imagine if somebody did that to your house, Zach? Uh, you know, it would be an interesting night. I'll say that would be the least, so. <laughs> Dude, but, like, what if you were sitting there watching uh, NASCAR and, like, Danica Patrick or something come roll through the front door? You know what I mean? Like, what's up? I want to hang out and watch, watch the races with you. Yeah, or, it would – it would be Dale Jr. I don't know who who races. Uh, I think Deegan's got a daughter that races. What if she showed up at the house and, <laughs> and said that she wanted to watch the uh, races? Like for sure, you're letting her in. Hey, I got to go ride uh, my 110 on uh, in Deegan's backyard yesterday. Dude, uh, Josh has been out there filming. Josh that uh, owns S3 Media with us that uh, does the Deegan's places wild dude and it's right there by the road like you can see it from the road oh are you talking about in north carolina uh is that where it was uh, in, uh, california. no in california in temecula his place in temecula yeah my house is right next to it really yeah i live like not even a mile away yeah dude that place is wild and the jumps that they got out there um yeah, was them kids That's just ran by the back door? They were sitting on our porch like, hey, y'all want to come check our place out? And one of them was like, yeah. And the other was like, no, he's a stranger. But you just, get to go, <laughs> you, you just get to go over there and ride at his place, huh? That place is sweet, dude. But no, I don't know him. I just went over there because it's like there's some open land over there. Like there's some trails and stuff. So I just went over there and rode on the open land. I actually ate crap going up a hill, so I looked like a total idiot. No, yeah. They were probably judging you, so just don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Hey, when so, are you uh, uh, when are you racing again? I know last time we talked, you were running a Scanlon's RS1 or something, maybe, right? Yeah, so check this out. That car got, uh, I don't know if you want to call it recycled, but a dude named Max Eddie uh, went out and got, he almost won the Sonora Rally in that little RS1 that we built. Really? He just put, he just put some stickers on it, wrapped it, and just freaking boned out and went and raced against the Matlocks. He ended up getting second because uh, he had a penalty, but dude almost won in that same little car. Dude, what happened to you running? I thought you was running the Worlds or something in it. Oh, I just gave it back to Craig. I mean, like, we ran the Worlds last year. It was pretty fun, but uh, I'd like to do another race. I don't I don't know, man. Like, I kind of feel like helping everybody else has been a really good thing. And I want to uh, – I've got two or three different options to uh, be a co-driver, which I'm not too sure about. But I think it would be cool to see how uh, other people start doing. Man, what uh, the, a good guy that you need to talk to, and other people that are that are running RS ones that are interested in racing, is you need to hook up with David Clay that yep. owns racing tracks. Great dude, but he and I have talked extensively. He's trying to put this program together where he gets like eight to ten RS one uh, owners and racers to where they can go race the Baja one thousand or the Baja five hundred. They share pit crews, they share parts, like ten solid dudes that bring some value. To where people that wouldn't normally get to run the Baja 1000 or Baja 500, they all run it together. And so he's yeah. doing the same thing. Like he put together a single pit crew. He's getting another dude to put together, and like they're running it together. Dude, it's super cool. Yeah. So we actually had David on the show when we were down at the Baja 500, and uh, I got two or three sponsors that are lined up to support that whole RS1 challenge. And uh, yeah, I've been talking to Travis Zollinger about how his build of cars and. Uh, uh, just everything. It's a super, super cool project. So I'm really glad that we were able to push the companies on board with that bad boy. Yeah, it looks like David's listening, but it's a thing worth getting behind. I mean, it would be a good opportunity for uh, people to have a good experience um, that wouldn't normally get to do it. But if you team up with other people that have some resources like spare axles or spare A arms, then all of a sudden you can do it as a team, you know? Dude, 100%. That's super cool. Yeah, that's so Mame, you could actually do that one. Uh, any, hey, any questions before my final question, uh, Zach? Yeah, so I was thinking, I've, I've been growing it out a little bit. It's getting a little oh, wild man. out here. And I'm thinking, eh, maybe the side needs to get a little shorter. What's, what's your uh, pro tip for out in the woods how to, how to clean it up? Man, the pro tip for me is I like to go with a hard edge, no fade, and then really get the thing to show. Because whenever I walk around, I want people to be like, oh, that dude knows he's got a mullet. Yeah. Like, I've seen people that do, like, a smooth fade into the top, like, high and tight and a little long in the back. And you're like, hey, fancy. I just, I wonder if he knows he's got a mullet or he just thinks it's a little longer. In <laughs> no, bro. I want people to be, look at me. Matter of fact, somebody stopped me at the concert last night, the Megan Morris concert in Cheyenne, and said, you know what? I freaking love your mullet. And I was like, that's 
That's why I do no fade. That's why I go hard edge at the long hair. You know who's got an epic mullet that you really need to model yours after? Is Parker James. Cuts it himself. Maybe the sickest mullet that I've ever seen. If anybody's ever seen Parker James mullet, they can attest. The sickest hard edge mullet I've ever seen. So start with I, that. Zero uh, all yeah. the way to the long hair. Dude, I gave him a huge hug at the Baja 500 because I was so proud of his mullet. I was like, dude, I don't even care what you do at the races. I just love your mullet, and I gave him a big old hug. Doesn't matter what he does. You just yep. see that thing, you know he's got his life together. So that's where you need to start your mullet. I tell everybody, start with hard edge, no fade, right behind the ear, one blade width behind the ear, and then it starts okay. showing in. Okay. Oh, okay. the one – I feel like that one blade width behind the ear, I feel like that's a real – Pro tip right there. Oh, bro, right. that's the, that's the one that people don't know about. When you hit just the one width to where it kind of scalps you right there at the hairline a little bit, then people know like, oh, I see where this is going. He's yeah, about to have he's about party. to have a backstage party going on. <laughs> All right, uh, hey, so <laughs> the last question I had: Who's the fastest in the F <laughs> in the S three crew doing donuts in the parking lot? Ooh, I'm gonna be honest. Um, we did it on the snow day. We all drug our cars out there. Was throwing it down. I don't know if it was the fastest, but I'm gonna say he put the best effort in because he literally held it on the floor till he blew the front differential out of the car because <laughs> it started catching the curb on the spins. And so, my boy QD, brand new 2020 car. Held it down to you, blew the front differential out of it. And so I was like, all right. Oh my God. Fair enough. How, how, Fair enough. How dizzy do you get when you get out of the car after blowing a front diff? I mean, you oh, dude, when pretty- you stop, you're you're so disoriented, dude. Like you just have to sit there with your head down, holding the steering wheel till the sky stops spinning. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. That's it was crazy. one of those, it was one of those burnouts where you're like, I mean, surely he's gonna, he's gonna stop, right? He's going to quit doing that, and then his front tires start catching the curb every turn. Go, go. And then, <laughs> and then you're like, all right, he's done. He's done. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, and guess it. Uh, ben Main said, uh, yeah, Quentin. <laughs> Old Benny. Old Benny, yeah, for sure it was. Uh, dude, that's hilarious. All right, well, hey, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. It went a little longer than expected, but much love, dude. Uh, thank you, Zach, for joining us, too. Man, it was a no pleasure talking to you guys. It always is nice to uh, hang out and talk to we. you. Yeah, uh, you guys too. Get some rest, boys. For sure, buddy. Keep, keep your eye on the back windows. <laughs> <laughs> always. All See right, you, later, boys. <laughs> See you. Uh, thanks very much to those guys. It was awesome. Thanks, Zach. Uh, it was awesome talking with those guys and uh, having a little bit of fun today on this Thursday. So uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, join us on Monday. For the Dirt Life Show, we have uh, an awesome show. We're going to have Cody Bradbury and uh, Corbin Lieberton at uh, their race shop. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, yeah, David, no problem. Your RS1 challenge is going to be amazing, buddy. All right. Peace out, guys.